Hey everyone. Today we're gonna get started on our monochromatic skull painting. Today is gonna be a really simple introduction into painting and we're gonna start by painting just the background today and tomorrow. Uh, before we get started, I just wanna talk about a few things. I wanna talk about what painting is. I wanna introduce all the different tools and just have you understand what you're using before you use it. Um, so today we're gonna be painting and I wanna let you know that painting has actually been around for 40,000 years. This goes all the way back to the earliest discovered rock paintings that were in like caves. Um, we're actually gonna be using acrylic paint specifically. Um, this paint is made up of something called pigment. Pigment is a powder that you find from a natural coloring material, like an animal, a plant, or a mineral. When you mix pigment, with a binder, you get paint. Um, different types of paint use different types of binders. Acrylic paint uses this synthetic material, that means like fake material. And it, it's almost like a plastic. Um, this is an example. This is like a bunch of dried white acrylic paint. You can see I could bend it like this and it doesn't really break. Um, some colors do break easily like this one was breaking easier a little bit ago, but you can see how it's bending. So it's like very plasticky. There's some black. This one's like very rubbery. So that's like some synthetic material and there are other kind of paints that we'll use throughout the year. Like we'll use watercolor paint. This is a little puck of brown watercolor paint. This is a pigment that's mixed with a material called gum arabic, and water helps it become fluid, but like acrylic paint and watercolor paint, the water eventually evaporates from the paint, leaving nothing but the pigment on the surface. Um, and then there's oil paint. I don't have any with me, but oil paint uses different types of oil like linseed oil or sunflower oil, there are many different types. So let's jump into it. Um, I wanna talk about some of the tools first. Um, first, I wanna talk about the paintbrush. So I have a few options right here. Um, you'll see that they're different based on color. I have flat brushes that are red. I have round brushes that are green. You can tell just by the brush head that this is a flat brush because it's square. A round brush that's round. So let's talk about the different parts of the brush. Um, first you have the bristles. Different brushes have different material for the bristles. Usually if, you're ha if you have nicer brushes for different paints, they are different types of animal hair. Um, squirrel, ox, bull, rabbit. Uh, there are many different types of hair that you can use. I know some people even have horse hair bristles. The next part of the brush is going to be this metal part. This is called the ferrule. The ferrule is the part that connects the bristles to the handle and you'll usually see these little lines. That's because those are used to crimp or to secure the ferrule to the handle. And then you have your handle. These are going to come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors based on the brush that you get. And that's simply the part that you hold with your hand. Then I wanna talk about your workstation before we get started. Um, I have my desk, my paper. Um, specifically, I have a few things over here. For example, I have my paint palette. Let's take this off. Your paint palette is a thin board or a slab where the artist lays down and mixes their colors. So a lot of artists will have a palette that's like totally covered in paint. With a lot of paints, you can kind of let it dry and then you could peel it off later. Some of us will have to clean our palettes though. I have my water bowl. This is to clean and to wash off your brushes. I have a small towel, a rag. This is, can be used to wipe off your brushes whenever you're done washing them. 
you can also use it to wipe down your workstation if you make a mess or when you're finished. And I also, I'm gonna have these paper trays out a lot because if we aren't using a lot of paint, I don't wanna get our palettes dirty so that we don't waste time cleaning them. Because if we only have just a teeny tiny bit of paint on these palettes, these are really cheap trays that we get from the school. So we can just take these and we can toss them into the garbage. All right, let's get started. Uh, I have purple out and I have a few choices in my brush. This is a lot of space that I have to cover. So I kind of want to use one of those bigger brushes so I can get some more coverage. Before I start painting, I'm just going to come and erase these keys that I used earlier. If it doesn't erase all the way, that's fine because you can paint over it. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to cover the background and I'm trying to keep the purple right now. I'm not painting in the skull. I'm painting everything around the skull. Uh, I'm actually gonna start with a small brush because there are two spots in the jaw where you see the background. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna pull some of that paint down. This is very important. You should not be putting a whole lot of paint on your brush. If you keep loading your brush up with too much paint, you're gonna have a bad time and there's, it's gonna take forever to dry. So I'm using pulling motions. I'm holding it very similar to how I would hold a pencil. And I'm not pushing down super hard, I'm just letting the paint catch to the paper. You'll notice if you push down really hard, you'll see the bristles of the paintbrush spread out when you push down, and that could cause you to paint inside the lines that you don't want to do. Okay, that's good so far. I'm gonna rinse it off, wipe it on the cloth, set it aside. I'm gonna grab my bigger brush. Remember, you don't wanna put a whole lot of paint on this. It shouldn't be a huge glob of paint, but I am gonna pull some paint down and I'm looking for little pieces like that. And I'm just gonna start filling in the space. You'll notice that I'm making a lot of different marks. I'm not just going in one direction. We're making paintings. So paintings are okay to look a little bit messy. We're not trying to make photographs here. So I'm not afraid if I see paint marks. If I like to see those paint brush marks. Those are nice. I'm also not gonna be worried about getting all the way to the edge. I kinda like having the edge a little bit misty with that white because it just shows the viewer that like I'm making a painting, I'm not making a photo. So I'm just going around right now and I'm kind of just filling in that space. You'll see I'm starting to go through a little bit more paint, but there aren't any large globs of paint on my paper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start watching both edges of my brush. Because remember, when you push down, it's gonna spread out. So the brush fans out. And I wanna pay attention to that side because I'm gonna use the edge of that brush and I'm gonna be very careful and paint the edge of the brush along the outline of my skull. I'm 
and this will give you a really nice edge. Notice I'm going really slow. I'm not trying to rush. Right now I'm using a flat brush because the flat brush is gonna hold a little bit more paint because it's a little bit larger. You'll also notice that some areas are darker and lighter. That's because this paint is pretty transparent so if I really want it to all look the same color, I would have to paint over it with a few layers. I'm not really worried about that. So I'm not gonna use paint and waste paint on that. I'm just watching the edge of that brush and the outline of the skull just like outlining the skull. So I'm not worrying about that side, I'm only worrying about that side. I can come in and fill this in later. Just like before when we were tracing, you'll also notice that I'm holding the paper down a little bit with my right hand. I'm actually gonna set this brush aside. I'm gonna show you the round brush a little bit. Same thing, I'm just gonna pull some color off. This isn't gonna hold as much paint, so that's about as much as I wanna put on my brush. I can still see the base of my bristles, that's good. And this one, same thing, the brush will fan out and I'm getting more of a basic line with this brush. See if I can zoom in here. I want to show you what it looks like when the brush fans out. So right now my brush is nice and round, but when I push down, you notice that it gets really wide and I'm paying attention to that edge and I'm filling in that line. Look at that. All right. Back to my big brush. Whenever you take your brush out of the bowl, you wanna to try to get all the water out because if you have too much water, it's gonna thin out your acrylic paint and it's just gonna make it a lot more see-through, which can be kind of a pain in the butt. All right, 
I'm really happy with this. This is a, a good start, a starting spot for me. Moving forward, I'm leaving the background the way it is right now, and then I'm gonna move from the outside in, so I'm gonna start with my shade, and then my tone, and then my tint. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.